All right, hey, what's up all you uh, Boss Bros? Um, today we're gonna show you how to change the oil in your 2012 or 2013 Boss 302. And the steps we're gonna show today would also be technically applicable for 2013 and 2014 Track Pack Mustangs as they take the same amount of oil as a 12 and 13 Boss 302 uh, because of the oil cooler. So 5W50, eight and a half quarts, and you're gonna use an FL500S oil filter. In the car we're gonna be working on today, this actually has 144.3 miles. Uh, it's a 2012, I mean, this is about as good example as you can get. And I know what a lot of you are probably thinking, uh, what the heck, why are y'all even changing the oil? The oil in that car is probably completely fine. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, it's had, it hasn't been changed, but at the same time, we don't know. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the lift and uh, we'll get rolling. Good thing about this car, is it's not lowered with lowering springs, so it makes our lift arms extremely easy to use. Um, today, I'm gonna use our little SV pinch weld jack pad. These are great. Uh, these don't, you know, induce any damage to the pinch weld or anything like that. And especially on a car like this, you know, you really don't wanna induce or add any damage to. So I'm gonna slide it right up under here where it goes. I may have to lower the lift pad just a touch. Bang, a little lubrication. All right, same thing for the rear. If you're doing this at home, don't jack up your pinch welds, no pun intended. Can't stand seeing cars with messed up pinch welds. And another thing, I'll show you when we get this up in the air, but another thing you wanna be careful of on the Boss 302 cars is the, um, the side exit pipe. You can get real, real, real close to it. So uh, this here with the pinch weld jack pad, we should be okay um, from what I can tell here. Do the same for the side here. Those pipes actually come out more than what I thought. Reminds me of a, of course, Cobra R, 2000 Cobra R and 9904 Lightning. Those things are just a pain in the, you know what, to get on a lift. But once you do it a few times, just like anything, you figure it out. All right, got our pad, our, our lift arm set. We'll bump the lift up a little bit. We'll make sure we're clear of our um, side pipe. All right, you're on that side. Got good pad contact there. Good pad contact there. And we are clear of the pipe there. Like I said, we'll get y'all a quick shot of that whenever we get it up in the air to be mindful of. All right, so here's what I was talking about. You see how close the pad on the lift arm is. I mean, we're talking just millimeters away from that side pipe. So y'all just be mindful of that area whenever you support your car. Uh, obviously this is Boss 302s only. Same thing for the other side. Okay, so uh, here's your drain plug. This is what you're gonna loosen. Let the oil drain into your, uh, your pan or your bucket. And uh, judging by this bolt, uh, there's no markings. So I don't think this has ever been off. And I'm gonna take a quick glance up here at the oil filter. And no, the oil has not been changed at this car. So I'm kind of on the fence and y'all can call me weird. Y'all can call me crazy, whatever. I'm a lunatic, this, that, or the other. But, uh, I kind of want to catch the oil out of this and save it. <laughs> well, that's probably too much, but who knows, you know, um, maybe worth something one day in a motorcraft museum of, uh, of, of what have you. So I'm gonna do my best to loosen that without any damage. So let's get a, we'll get a wrench in size for you and we'll get started. A lot of you aren't gonna be changing the oil on a car with such low miles, but uh, we, have our, we have our traditional, you know, socket wrench and socket and open in wrench. I'm just checking wrenching sizes. I can't remember what this is uh, off the top of my head. So yeah, there we go. So it's a 15 millimeter wrenching size. I'm gonna use this ratcheting uh, box in uh, wrench or it's combination wrench using the box inside. But um, this usually doesn't mar the, the little ratcheting portion of this in, on the inside of the, of the box in portion. God dang, I'm saying all kind of weird words, but Anywho, this uh, is kind of non-marring, so let's see what we can what we can get out of this. Oh no! All right, I'm gonna try the opened-in portion and see what we get. 
Okay, broke it free. All right, we didn't mark it up, sweet. Dang. Should I, should I, should I collect the oil just to say we did it? I think that's gonna be impossible. All right, we're gonna position our pan. We've made the executive decision to just let it go to the oil recycling facility. So speak now, comment now, forever hold your peace. We're going, fellas, we're going. Golly, this is insane. I mean, here we go. Wow, man. Oh, wow. Look at the golden hue to it still. And we gotta pay attention here while this is draining, but the gasket stayed behind on the pan. See that little shimmer of blue there? So whenever this drains and we go to wipe and clean and get ready to reinstall our drain plug, we wanna pull that gasket back off and put it back into the, uh, we wanna put it back into the bolt. So while it drains, I like to take a uh, microfiber towel Something lint free. I don't like to use cheap paper towels or red shop rags. It's just not a preference of mine. I like microfiber towels because that's what they're designed to do. Uh, obviously be lint free and they're designed to, you know, pull contaminants and pull things away from the surface, collect it into the, into the, you know, pile of the towel. So. Yeah, I didn't. I knocked a little bit of paint off, just a touch, but nothing a Sharpie can't fix. This is kind of slow to just a run, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this gasket off of here. I just wanna clean it up. And then we'll set it back in the, uh, we'll set it back in the bolt here. Just remember which side went where. Went. Slippery. And we'll do a final wipe on this when we get it back in there with brake clean. Okay, so we've slowed to a drip. I always like to uh, start the bolt. And just as I get right about a little more than an eighth inch away, I like to wipe and then thread it down. Okay, we'll move our drain pan out of the way. Give us a nice little final wipe with some good quality brake clean. Don't buy the brake clean that melt your tool, your plastic tool handles or stuff like that. Get some good brake clean. So I usually just kind of hand tighten these, uh, snug them down. But if you want to be particular, perfectionist, whatever you want to call it, these actually have a torque spec of 19 pound feet. And since this is a 144.3 mile Boss 302, we're gonna treat it to a 19 pound feet torque spec. So when you torque stuff like this, of course you wanna, you know, make sure you got a good hold of it. You don't wanna pull, you know, in, in this area. At the handle is where you wanna operate the torque current. That way you get an accurate torque reading. And then we're at 19 pound feet. Okay, so same goes for these bolts. They've never been touched before, I don't think. Oh yeah, they have, so somebody may have just inspected it at one point. But there's three bolts that secure this lower tray in place. You remove all three of these and you just let it swing down. All right, so there's the oil filter. Now how you can tell, we'll look at it a little closer when we get it off of the uh, oil cooler, but you notice that black line that says FOMO Co. That's how you can tell that's an original filter because all of the service filters show Motorcraft and the part number. And they've been that way, you know, ever since the 500S was around. Granted, you know, the design and stuff of the Motorcraft branding's changed, but that is your difference between the OEM filter and an aftermarket replacement service filter. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, um, as you can see here, the kind of a K-member brace uh, per se, your oil, whenever you loosen this, it's gonna, it has the potential to run all over this. Um, I'm a neat freak, I'm a clean freak. You can use aluminum foil, you can get the Forma funnel is what they call them. 
uh, it redirects the oil to your drain pan or your bucket, or you can simply use a piece of cardboard. And that's what we're gonna show today uh, is a piece of cardboard. And you can take really any size. I'm just gonna take the box that um, the Motorcraft 5W50 came in. And then what also helps is if you kind of wrinkle the cardboard some, and this will help you form it into position. Okay, so what I like to do first, I like to get up in there and loosen it. That way all this, your cardboard or your drain pan bucket, none of that's in your way. Um, they're not tight, two hands, get the job done. And then once you feel like you could turn it with one hand. That's when you want to stop. Position your cardboard. And then drain pan under cardboard. And then from there, we can reach up. And then there it comes. So it's upside down, but there's your FOMO Co. And that's actually a good time to talk about this. Um, obviously don't throw it in the trash. You want to properly recycle your oil filter and the oil that you remove from the vehicle. Uh, most auto parts stores take it, but probably a quick Google search of oil recycling near me and uh, you'll probably, you will probably yield a result on where you can take your used oil. All right, so we've let our oil uh, drain for a little bit now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cardboard out of our way push the, your bucket or your drain pan out of the way. And then we'll take some brake clean, some good brake, good quality brake clean. And we'll, uh, we'll spot mop our oil cooler here. Make sure the uh, flange mating surface is nice and clean. And then we're ready to pre-took our new oil filter and install it into place. Okay, so here's our new oil filter. I always like to clean the gasket. You can shoot some compressed air. You don't want to, you know, a lot of pressure. You just want enough to kind of just, you know, blow out any possible debris or anything like that that may be in your oil filter. Again, that's kind of being a little too critical, but you know, to each their own. So I'm going to pre-soak the media just a little bit. It's always good practice. Nothing too crazy because the oil filter is at an angle. And then for years, people have always lubricated this gasket. And then the Ford workshop manual for these cars, they actually tell you do, to not lubricate the gasket, but I always like just a real, real thin film of some fresh, clean engine oil on our gasket. And now we're ready to install it. You may get a little oil, fill, uh, your little oil run back, a uh, little oil it may run out and just wipe it up, be a little quick, and then go right on with your oil filter. Don't cross thread it. Spin it on until it gets firm with your hand. The Ford book calls for 142 pound inch, but I always just hand tighten these things. So basically when it makes contact with the oil cooler, I just go a little further and call it quits. And then what you want to do, we had our cardboard in place, uh, but it's always good to just double check, you know, make sure we didn't get a whole bunch of oil everywhere uh, because you want to wipe that up because oil attracts dust and crud and stuff like that. And again, you know, if you're a clean freak, whatever, you know, you don't want this area, you know, nasty, cruddy and dirty. All right, so now we'll go ahead and reposition the little uh, tray here. Loosely start all three of the bolts. Man, that sounds good, whatever that is. Okay. 
I never get carried away with an impact on these uh, because on what, I, what I've seen on other cars is people will take their impact and they'll run these bolts down and the floating washer will start to push through or pull through the tray and then you know it's not gonna secure anything. So if you're gonna use an impact, just run it down until it stops and then you can take your quarter inch ratchet and turn it the rest away. Got ours on a little ex on a extension, you don't need it. I just like the working room. And uh, I did go until it's snug. All right, our drain plug's tight. We wiped everything down that we wanted to. We verified that our oil filter's tight. Our three bolts are um, tight on our tray. So we'll uh, lower it back down and we'll fill it with some oil. Go ahead and open your hood and your oil fill on the uh, Roadrunner engine here. And of course your uh, Gen 1 Coyote on the 1314 track pack cars. It's right here, simple little quarter turn. And then you'll want to use a uh, funnel. That way you don't make a mess. Okay, you want to make sure your funnel's clean. You could probably tell uh, that ours are a little shiny. Uh, this is clean. We just changed the oil in a uh, GT500. So I'm just going right back in on this car without wiping it down because it's just oil. So here's our first quart, 5W50 full synthetic. Uh, remember 12, 13 Boss 302s, 13, 14 track packs, um, eight and a half quarts. Uh, it's also probably good to note that if you have a uh, car uh, with the optional Boss oil cooler, so if you may have bought it from us, uh, it was sold under the Ford Performance brand, basically the same exact oil cooler that was on this car and the track pack cars, you would also use eight and a half quarts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the half. This is uh, obviously one quart, 946 milliliters. So um, we'll wanna put oil into it till it gets somewhere, you know, right around uh, kind of the little, the let's just call it the 500 mark per se, uh, but around that area. Don't really have to micromanage it. A little bit more. Good. All right, so that's the half. Now we get to fill it with eight more quarts. And if you have one, um, I would use a long or a wide neck funnel. Our funnel has kind of a, a narrow neck. And of course, uh, you know, the wider the funnel, the easier this is uh, to pour because it, uh, it doesn't pull up, you know, as it's trying to get through, you know, that small neck. Small neck. All right, and last one, eight and a half, and then we'll uh, start it up. We'll let it come down from cold idle, and then we'll check our level on the dipstick. We got all eight and a half quarts in. I'll go ahead and remove this, have a microfiber towel ready, catch any drips. Check your fuel cap. Make sure you don't have any obvious dirt or debris. 144.3 miles, this thing's clean as a whistle. Reinstall your cap with the words and everything in our, you know, that are legible. Don't be the guy that installs the darn thing like that, okay? All right, now I'll hop in it. We'll start it up. Like I said, we'll just let it come down from cold idle, just enough to get, get a little bit of heat in the oil, and then we'll check it. Yes, my hands are clean, by the way. down from cold idle. Let it on. Ah, dang. Most annoying thing in the world is a key chime. 
seat belt chime too. All right, so the dipstick on the Coyote cars, it's kind of a nuisance really. I mean, you really, there's no, I mean, we're really not a clean path with the uh, sound tube if your car still has it. And of course the uh, strut tower brace if your car has it, which all 12, 13 Boss 302s and track backs have it. Track backs have a little bit different strut tower brace than the bosses. All right, well, let's try this. Have a, have a towel ready. If your engine's dirty, you may want to blow this area with some compressed air. But uh, what we'll do, we'll walk it out. You'll do an initial wipe. You'll put it back. Fully seat it. Bring it back out, and this is when we'll check it. And we are right on the money. See it in the crosshatch there. Right on the money. Okay, so now we're gonna reset the oil life. Um, we're gonna show it on a 2012. Boss 302, and then what we'll do, we'll jump over to a uh, 2014 Mustang uh, to show the steps for a 2013 Boss. Uh, even though it's a 2014 Mustang, the steps will be the same. So you'll insert the key, you don't have to start it, you'll just go key on. The annoying ding will go for three seconds. Uh, over here in your message center, you'll see driver door ajar, because we have our, our door open. We'll click reset underneath the headlight switch. So once we hit reset, then you know it'll come up with uh, the last trip setting we were on. So in our case, trip A. All right, so you'll, you'll click setup twice and it'll pop up oil life and it'll tell you a percent. Ours is 100% because it has 144.3 miles. Follow the on-screen instructions, hold reset equals new. So we'll just go ahead and hold reset. Oil life set to 100%. And then after that, you can key off and you're good to go. Okay, so for a 2013 boss, again, this is a 2014 Mustang, same rules apply. All your controls are gonna be on the steering wheel. Same message, driver door jar, you'll click okay to get out of that. Depending on what mode you're in, you want to arrow back all the way to the main menu. You'll come down to settings, vehicle, oil life reset. I recently changed the oil in this car and you would select set to 100% and you would hold okay to reset. I'm not going to do it because I didn't change the oil in this car. Even though it was recently, it was still a couple hundred miles ago. And then you key off and you're good. All right, people, that's going to conclude the 2012-2013 uh, Boss 302 oil change, uh, as well as the 13-14 track pack and uh, other 11-14 Coyote cars that had the uh, Boss 302 uh, style oil cooler from Ford Performance. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Hope you took a little bit away from it. If you all value this type of content, go ahead and like the video, uh, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way you don't miss any of our future uploads. And until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things uh, S197 Mustang. Keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.